We welcome you back into the Alex Strove Show now presented by Cream City Central. And we go to the phone lines where the editor and lead writer for VikingsWire.com, which is the part of the USA Today Network, joins us. His name is Jack White. You can find him on Twitter at Jack White MN, Minnesota, of course. Jack, how are you, my friend? Thanks for taking the time. Good, Alex. Thanks for having me on. So, Jack, I guess let's start with the big thing that's been coming out of the neighboring state, and that's been the Dal- Dalvin Cook contract uh, holdout speculation situation, whatever title you want to throw after the word contract. Uh, you've done a great job covering it for, for VikingsWire.com. Uh, it, it's been an interesting development these last few weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So just to give your Wisconsin listeners an idea of what's been going on, um, Cook will no longer participate in team-related activities until he receives what he determines to be a reasonable deal. That's according to Adam Scheffner of ESPN. Um, it later came out that uh, ESPN's Courtney Cronin reported that Cook's ideal contract figure was north of what Christian McCaffrey was making uh, per year, $16 million. Chad Graff of The Athletic then said that Cook is actually looking for more like $13 million. Then Cronin said that uh, Cook would gladly take that number, being $13 million. So it seems like a magic number for Cook is $13 million right now. Um, I mean, looking at the Vikings' uh, cap space right now, they got $12.2 million, just over $12.2 million in cap space, according to over the cap. Botrack has them at just over $11.7 million. So they might have to make a move to make that work for 2020. And I think there are some problems for this. If you're So there's kind of been this debate right now uh, between people who has more leverage, Cook, or the Vikings. The Vikings are offense that loves to run the ball, but I think the new CBA kind of makes things interesting for uh, Dalvin Cook. Looking at it here, it states that a player shall not receive an accrued season for any league year in which the player is under contract to a club and in which he failed to report to the club's preseason training camp. So what does that mean for Cook? It means he could get fined $50,000 per day if he misses training camp. And he becomes a restricted free agent instead of an unrestricted free agent. Right. So in short, it could cost him a lot of money. I think that leverage kind of affects things. I think if you're the Vikings, you still want to sign him just because he's such a big, such a good running back and such a big part of your offense that I think uh, you might want to give him a deal. You just maybe don't want to pay him that much. Jack White is my guest. Jack, this is almost reminiscent of kind of the Le'Veon Bell situation a few years ago with Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, I mean, Le'Veon Bell got the franchise tag, and uh, there wasn't much precedent for people like holding out with the franchise tag, um, but he did it. And with Cook, it's kind of similar, but um, I'll say this. I think from what the Vikings have said publicly, they just really value Cook. And Gary Kubiak is in his first season as offensive coordinator. He was on the staff last year for the Vikings in his first season. And I just think um, from what they've said publicly, it just seems like if I had to guess, they would get a deal done. Um, Kubiak was asked kind of about the growing trend of devaluing the running back position. And he basically said, uh, you're probably talking to the wrong guy on that. He said, Delvin Cook could teach a class on their system. And he's a bright, smart football player. And it's just part of the business. So I think like from what they've said publicly, um, it seems like they want to get a deal done with Cook. Um, and from what they do schematically, it seems like they should want to get a deal done too, because ESPN's Mike Clay reported that the Vikings were the run heaviest offense in the NFL in 2019. Wow. That's a game script adjusted stat. So this is a team that loves to run the ball. Obviously Cook was their leading rusher. Um, Alexander Madison had a good rookie year in, uh, 2019, but we just don't know what he would be like, um, in a situation like Cook where he has to take and run the ball like 250 times. We just don't, there are already so many unknowns on this Vikings offense, that I think you're going to want to prioritize getting a deal done for Cook. We'll get to those other question marks in the offense here in a second, Jack, but, but I want to use your expertise because clearly you're very well versed on the subject. If you had to take a guess, make a prediction, when do you think realistically the nearest uh, time possible to get a deal done would be? If I had to take a guess, I would say they'd probably try and get a deal done now, like this season, just because they value Cook. And, like, I mean, sure, he could hold out and he could miss a few games, but the Vikings aren't a team that would be fine with them missing a few games. Like, I have this as, like, a 9-7, and 8-8, eight and eight, maybe 10-6 and six Vikings team. That first game we play the Packers, like, 
I mean, I'm sure Packers fans would love if Dalvin Cook held out for that first game. Like, not <laughs> having him is a big part of our offense, big part of their offense, and it just really affects things. So I think the Vikings would want to get a deal done sooner rather than later. No, that's that's a great answer. Jack White is is my guest, the editor over at VikingsWire.com. You mentioned some of the question marks uh, around this offense, and wide receiver's been kind of a weird one, right? We saw the, the Stephon Diggs exit, now Justin Jefferson – brought in via the draft. I know you're a big fan of this pick. Bring me up to speed a beat on uh, what you're feeling the last two, two and a half months uh, since the selection has been made. Yeah, I really like Justin Jefferson. I like that they went out and got a guy who uh, can go about replacing some of Stefan Diggs' production. I know some people have said recently that he might be better than Stefan Diggs. I have trouble believing that. Diggs is such a good route runner. He's such a big part of the Vikings offense. But Justin Jefferson's an interesting player. Uh, QBX said recently, it's fair to say that uh, he'll be playing inside quite a bit, being like in the slot. Right. Uh, he adds that dimension to the offense. Um, I think, so if you're the Vikings, you shouldn't be like, who's the guy to replace Stefan Diggs? Because I don't think you can just plug in a guy unless you were really aggressive in a trade or something. I think you should say, what's the committee we could put together that may make up some of the production we lost with Diggs? And I think he could be a big part of that. He's a week one starter, right? Yeah, for sure. I think he's like, I think it's safe to say that he would, if I had to take a guess right now, I think he's a week one starter at that wide receiver two spot, um, kind of beside Adam Thielen there. Right. Um, I think wide receiver three is kind of an interesting battle with Tajay Sharp, Chad Beebe, um, and BZ Johnson there. And then Courtney Davis, maybe even. So it's like you got some interesting options at the wide receiver three spot. And then maybe Irv Smith Jr., the tight end, has a bigger season than he once did, and that could help go about replacing Diggs. I'm glad you threw the Courtney Davis mention in there. He was one of my favorite, you know, lower prospects in the draft earlier this year. So, I, you know, as much as I uh, will admit, I'm not a huge Vikings fan. I'm a big Courtney Davis fan. So I'm <laughs> glad you gave him some love. Jack White, managing editor of VikingsWire.com, joins me. Let's talk about Kirk Cousins. I mean, obviously, statistically, not too shabby of a year for him. It seems like he's fitting into Minnesota pretty well. Uh, now a couple of years in, what, what what's the uh, what's the ceiling for Kirk Cousins in this offense in 2020, Jack? Josh, the ceiling. I think the ceiling is going to depend on Dalvin Cook. I think um, I think it's kind of uh, kind of unwise to look at his numbers and be like, how good can he be numbers wise? I think you should look at uh, just how effective he is, how efficient he is, what his QBR could be, that kind of thing, because we saw. In um, 2018, his first season with the Vikings, John DeFilippo was uh, offensive coordinator, and he was dropping back a ton, and the Vikings' offense wasn't very successful. Then um, they switched to Kevin Stefanski, and they ended up emphasizing, during that year, they ended up emphasizing a system that was kind of more conducive to Cousins' success. He was dropping back still, but not nearly as much. They were running the football more. They were doing play action and they were doing rollouts. I expect more of that. I expect uh, kind of similar numbers to 2019. Hopefully he's just, hopefully uh, the Vikings just kind of put him in a situation where he's not a guy like Mahomes where he can win you a game, but he's a guy who can properly manage a game if a system is put around him. And if Dalvin Cook has a big year, I think uh, so be Kirk. Yeah, and I think uh, as we mentioned, Kirk Kirk's wavered, right? He's been he's been kind of one of the weirder quarterbacks in terms of consistency since his time with Washington. So overall, he's been uh, he's been solid, right? I mean, obviously, you've got to be pretty happy with, with the progress he's made in that offense the last two years. Yeah, and you would think that most Vikings fans would think that, but a lot of people are kind of out on Kirk, and I kind of, I kind of don't get it. It's like people forget about Christian Ponder, I guess. Like, I mean, like there were some dark times at the quarterback oh, position. Yeah. It would have been great if Teddy worked out, but um, you know, things happen, and right now Kirk's their guy, and I'm not too, I'm not too mad about it, frankly. I think he's an above-average quarterback. I think you can win a Super Bowl with an above average quarterback so long as you put the right pieces around him. And I think the Vikings are in a position where maybe they could do that. And you bring up Teddy Bridgewater, which makes me want to pose this one. We saw what he did in his five game span with new Orleans last year. Now he has the reins in Carolina heading into 2020. This is more just your opinion and it won't sway me too hard either way. Who would you rather have in 2020 Bridgewater or cousins? 
Oh, Cousins, no question. Okay. Teddy's just so unknown. And I'm I'm rooting for him. I don't think you'll hear it from a Vikings fan and be like, oh, Teddy, I don't like that guy. People love Teddy around here. He was always a nice guy. And it just seemed like, uh, you know, that injury was so gruesome. It's, like, great that he could come back for it, from it and do well in his limited time with the Saints. And um, I'm personally glad he got a chance with the Panthers. And obviously that's, like, a, an interesting pairing, him and Christian McCaffrey over there. Absolutely. Jack White, our guest at this time, you wrote a piece a couple days ago, Vikings among teams that didn't win division in 2019, but are favorites to do so in 2020. Of course, it makes sense. And it happens each year. They seem like along with Green Bay, I'd assume as the favorites in the NFC North this year, right? It's it's a two team. It's a two team race in my mind. I think that's safe to say, but you never know about the Bears. And I've heard some people make the case for the Lions. Yeah, Um, they still have a really good defense. Um, you don't have to tell Vikings fans that Nick Foles can definitely surprise some people. I think they learned that firsthand in the playoffs. Um, and you got uh, the Lions, who, I mean, Matt Stafford is uh, like still a really good quarterback. He's just never really had like a great team around him. And I really like the DeAndre Swift draft pick they had, where yeah. maybe he could be like their premier running back. And if that were to happen, like, who knows? I'd say they're like, there are a lot of question marks at the NFC North that I think people just don't really like. We're just going to have to, like, see, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see how this plays out. But if I had to take a guess, I would say it's probably the Packers' division to lose with the Vikings behind them. I think both the Vikings and the Packers could make the playoffs, but I think right now the Packers might be the better team. Yeah, I think with the expanded field, you could easily make the case for three teams out of the NFC North. As It's it's one of the, as you said, one of the m- more uh, question mark field divisions uh, with a lot of talent and a lot of shakeup. That could happen. couple more for you, Jack. Uh, I know we mentioned this off the air, but I want to get it on the air. We do a lot of talking on the show, obviously, about the Jordan Love pick, uh, but we haven't really gotten much outsider's perspective. You cover the Vikings. What was the reaction for you on draft night when the Packers not only drafted Jordan Love, but traded up to do so? Yeah, I mean, I think if you're a Vikings fan, obviously you rejoice because it's not really a pick <laughs> for the short term. but if you really think about it, like I feel like a lot of people saw that pick and they're like, Oh, the Packers are like done now. Like they're going to have like a bad locker room, all this stuff. I'm not so sure of that. I really don't like, I just think that Aaron Rodgers could even be more motivated and do better now that they drafted Jordan love. And I also think, sure. They drafted Jordan love, which probably isn't a player who's going to start 16 games for you in 2020, but that doesn't mean they're going to lose like four more games because of that. They still have a really good front seven. They still have a pretty good offensive line. They still have Devontae Adams. They still have good pieces around Rodgers. I think it's still a good team. I don't think the Jordan Love pick is the end of the world. It was just kind of a head scratcher at the time. At the time, it definitely was. A little bit more sense, but you mentioned that chip on your shoulder. I'm going to make you make a way too early prediction that I'm going to hold you to. Who wins the NFL MVP in 2020? Shoot shoot from the hip here, Jack. Oh, man. Gosh, yeah. Put me on the spot here, but I'm going to go... I mean, Mahomes is the lame pick, but it I'll is. give you Mahomes, and then I'll go interesting pick, Christian McCaffrey. If that Panthers team improves a lot and he puts up, like, crazy numbers, I don't know anything could happen. That's my dark horse pick. I like but it. But I think it's probably Mahomes. I, I, I don't like see it. R. Jackson falling off too much, but yeah. See, that's that's a question mark for me, but that's a conversation for another day. Jack, uh, you stay safe, my friend, and we'll do it again soon, all right? Really appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. That's Jack White, the managing editor of VikingsWire.com. You can find him on Twitter at Jack White MN as he brings some great Vikings insight. Obviously, the guy knows his stuff. He's cranking out a bunch of articles every day uh, for VikingsWire. I'm going just through his author page right here as we were chatting. And, and the guy puts out a ton of contact.